The Health Sciences Authority, HSA, has in place a post-market surveillance program to monitor the safety, quality and efficacy of health products. A major component of the program is Adverse Event or AE monitoring. Healthcare professionals play a vital role in reporting suspected AEs to HSA so that we can monitor the safety of the products and take necessary actions to safeguard public health. Through this video, we aim to bring you through the various steps in AE reporting and assessment. We hope you will provide your support in the National Safety Monitoring Program to make health products safer for the public. First, let's find out what is considered an AE. An AE is any untoward medical occurrence in a patient administered a pharmaceutical or health product. There is a wide range of AEs that may occur. Such AEs can include serious cutaneous adverse reactions, drug-induced liver injury, blood dyscrasias, and cardiac arrests. Diagnosis of adverse events are usually based on unintended physical signs and symptoms, abnormal laboratory results, changes in vital signs, increase in frequency of the AE, and complications from surgery. Let's move on to how we can submit AE reports to HSA. You can report AEs to us through the online form on the HSA website or if you are in the public healthcare sector, you can report through the electronic reporting system for allergies and AEs available in your institution. Alternatively, you can report to us by using the ADR forms available on the HSA website. To facilitate the reporting of different types of health products, the forms have been color-coded. You may use the yellow form for reporting drugs and complementary health products, the blue form for vaccines, and the green form for advanced therapeutic products such as cell, tissue, and gene therapy products. Once you have completed the form, you may submit it to us via fax, post, or email. Please call us if you need any further clarification. Now, let us prepare all the essential information required for a valid and good quality report to facilitate the assessment of the AE. Please provide us information about the patient's gender, date of birth, ethnicity and identification number. This helps to remove duplicate reports. In order for us to assess the seriousness and causality of the AE, please provide a concise description of the event, the date of onset, its seriousness and the patient's outcome. Information on the suspected health product such as the active ingredient, brand name, the dose given to the patient, therapy dates and batch number, if available, should be reported. Your contact is essential for follow-up information where necessary, so please provide your contact number and the name of your place of practice. The next step would be for you to assess the causality of the AE related to the use of the health product and indicate its seriousness. Causality assessment of AEs is a method used to estimate the strength of association between exposure to a product and the occurrence of the AE. The best way to visualize this is on a spectrum such as this. Based on the different criteria, you can place the strength of association of the AE with a suspected health product on the most appropriate part of the spectrum. Let's take a look at some scenarios to better illustrate this idea. A patient comes to you with recurring macular papular rash. He developed the rash a week after taking allopurinol for his gout flare. He had previously taken allopurinol a few months back and experienced a similar reaction. This indicates a positive re-challenge. Furthermore, allopurinol is known to cause reactions like this. Hence, this may be considered a definite causality. In this next scenario, your patient whom you had prescribed penicillin a week ago for his infection comes back complaining of a bad rash on his arm. You suspect that it is drug-induced vasculitis. He doesn't have any other medical conditions or is taking any other drugs. You advise him to discontinue the penicillin. After stopping the drug, he recovers from the AE. This indicates a positive D challenge. In this case, it could be considered a probable causality. You have a new patient consulting you for the first time. She tells you that she's been taking cortrimoxazole and diclofenac 3 to 4 weeks ago for a urinary tract infection. She says that she had fever, felt tired and had rash on her arms a few days ago. From your observation, she appears jaundiced. You request for blood and liver function tests. 
At this point, you are not sure which drug is the cause of the AE. You suspect drug-induced liver injury, so you discontinue her drugs. However, the patient didn't come back for her follow-up appointments, and so you do not know the outcome. In this case, the AE could possibly be related to the drugs. You have another new patient. He tells you he noticed a bad rash had appeared yesterday. He says that he completed a course of erythromycin two weeks back to clear up a skin infection. He also tells you that he has chronic asthma and he has sensitive skin. Furthermore, you don't have any of his pre-existing medical records. In this case, it may be an unlikely causality. The last option, unconfirmed, means that there is not enough evidence or data to determine the causality at this point in time. When new information comes about, the causality can be updated accordingly. Now we move on to assessing seriousness of the AE. A serious AE is any untoward medical occurrence that at any dose results in death, is life-threatening, requires hospitalization or prolongation of existing hospitalization, results in persistent or significant disability, is a congenital anomaly or birth defect, or is assessed to be medically significant. After successfully submitting your AE report, it will be analysed along with the other reports in HSA's safety database. HSA reviews the AE reports based on the expectedness of the AE in relation to the known safety profile of the product, the incidence of AEs reported locally or internationally, as well as taking in consideration advice from clinical experts. When a potential safety signal is detected, a benefit-risk assessment is conducted. The outcome of the assessment may result in the implementation of risk mitigation measures to manage significant safety concerns. These measures may include updates to the package insert of the product, restrictions on the use or even suspension of the product if the risks are deemed to outweigh the benefits. Other measures may be for the company to develop and distribute educational materials such as physician education materials or patient medication guides. Physician education materials are given to you to raise awareness regarding specific safety concerns. It also provides specific advisories for you to manage manage and monitor the safety issue. Patients may also be provided with patient medication guides to help them manage the risks and to educate your patients on the possible early signs of AEs. Educational materials which have been reviewed by HSA carry the statement, this document has been approved by HSA. We may also communicate significant safety issues to you and or the public through Dear Healthcare Professional Letters, HSA's Adverse Drug Reaction News Bulletin, press releases and or updates on the HSA website. We hope this video has provided you with the relevant information on reporting of AEs to HSA. We look forward to your support and contribution to the protection and advancement of Singapore's public health and safety. Just remember, you don't have to be certain, you just have to be suspicious.